On Monday, a committee of the German parliament, the Bundestag, heard a petition calling for sanctions against Chinese officials for violating human rights. Glacier Kuang, a digital rights activist from Hong Kong now studying in Berlin, was one of the initiators of the petition that also calls on Germany to sue China in the International Court of Justice for its actions in Hong Kong. DW correspondent Thomas Sparrow was at the Bundestag as Glacier Kuang arrived for the hearing. Today is a big day for activist Glacier Kuang in Berlin. In a few hours, German MPs will be discussing a petition she started, which has been signed by over 50,000 people. How are you feeling about today, Glacia? Are you nervous? Yes, I'm very nervous because it will be the first time I'm speaking in front of parliamentary members and it will be about Hong Kong. That's why I'm very nervous about today. Kuang wants Germany to do more against human rights violations in Hong Kong. What exactly are you calling for? What are the actions that you're expecting? We are calling for individual sanctions against human rights violations that happened in Hong Kong and China. We are also asking for a lifeboat scheme for Hong Kongers that are in need. And we are also asking the government to call off the investment deal with China because that will damage Germany's commitment to values. Bye-bye. Kuang says the German government's reaction has been weak. Berlin has criticized China's policies, but the activist wants more. Inside Parliament, Kuang gives a short speech and discusses the crisis with MPs. The current situation in Hong Kong is dramatic and it's getting worse day by day. Basic freedoms, rule of law, human rights are being deliberately and systematically destroyed by Beijing. The passing of the national security law has unfortunately confirmed all the fears that existed. Even the so-called loyal opposition is now under attack one cannot help feeling that Beijing does not want any opposition in Hong Kong. A foreign ministry official is also there and defends the government's reaction. Following a Franco-German initiative, member states that have extradition treaties with Hong Kong, including us, have suspended these extradition treaties. We meet Glacier Kuang again when the hearing is over. So no decision was expected today, Glacia, but how did it go? I think the hearing generally went well, went well. I made all my points that I wanted to make at the first place, and the parliamentarian members, did. most of them did express support towards Hong Kong. But the government still gave very, very official answers without promising concrete action. Kuang is aware that many of her demands may not be met. But, she says, all change begins with recognition and discussion. And definitive action on that petition is still awaited. But let's get more on Germany's position on China from Reinhard Bütikofer. He's been a German politician and is chairman of the European Parliament's Delegation for Relations with China. Welcome, Mr. Bütikofer. Is it time for Germany to impose sanctions on Chinese officials for their actions in Hong Kong? Well, it is time for the EU to uh, take joint action uh, and of course germany as one of the uh, more powerful capitals within the eu has to play a very proactive role in that regard and uh, that's why i'm happy that uh, these issues are not just being raised by us in the european parliament where we have uh, demanded several times that such sanctions should be taken, but that it's also raised from the public uh, through, for instance, uh, petitions. So these issues are, have definitely already been raised. But to go back to the point that you made about Germany being more proactive, why do you think Germany hasn't been so proactive thus far? Well, it would certainly be unfair to say that Germany hasn't done anything. Uh, Germany has, for instance, suspended its uh, extradition agreement with Hong Kong. And uh, the German foreign minister has also uh, um, made uh, several public statements. But um, Germany, just like other European countries, has been reluctant to really move forward uh, and to take um, uh, more uh, more forceful steps. And obviously, whatever we've done so far has not really impressed uh, the Hong Kong authorities, nor has it impressed Beijing. And uh, 
if we want to make them understand that what they're doing, that the uh, oppression that they are pursuing in, in Hong Kong comes with a price, then obviously we have to do more. And I think we have to do more on two fronts. We need to um, uh, implement sanctions. We now have the uh, EU's global human rights sanctions mechanism, and it should be invoked vis-a-vis uh, -vis a couple of figures in Hong Kong, including Carrie Lam. And on the other hand, the EU should also, and Germany in particular, should also work diligently towards uh, raising this issue in international fora and, uh, for instance, creating a contact group with, uh, for Hong Kong with right. other like-minded countries to pay attention and to let, not, uh, let that topic not vanish from the international agenda. You talk about more action from the EU and from Germany, but then in December, you have the EU that agreed on an investment deal with China, a deal that Germany had been strongly backing. I'm wondering what is the message that this sends to the Chinese government? Well, unfortunately, um, that's not the, the message that, that I would have want to see. Um, after a terrible year with um, um, uh, very uh, aggressive policies, uh, not just in Hong Kong, also in Xinjiang, also vis-a-vis -vis Australia, also in the South China Sea, also on the uh, Himalayan border with uh, India, for instance, after right. such a terrible year uh, of uh, Chinese aggressiveness, we basically put a Christmas present under Xi Jinping's Christmas tree. Uh, uh, the timing couldn't have been more unfortunate. And um, um, I, I, would, I regret having to say that, that my government, in this case, the German government, um, uh, emphasized trade over uh, geopolitical concerns and over human rights. And I think that's uh, a... a priority, that's a sequence of priorities right. that we should have moved on. We'll leave it there for the timing, but thank you so much for joining us. Reinhard Bütikofer, Chairman of the European Parliament's Delegation for Relations with China. Thank you, sir. And in Hong Kong itself, the new national security law has already had an impact on free speech. My colleague Sarah Kelly spoke with the former Hong Kong legislator Michael Tien. He's a pro-Beijing politician and he admitted to her that the new law had had a chilling effect on political debate. You have sometimes spoken out against the government. Do you personally have to watch what you say? How worried are you? My honest opinion and feedback is that, yes, there's been a tightening of freedom to express views, particularly when it comes to Hong Kong uh, uh, gaining some kind of a greater control over its own destiny, all right, about uh, civic nomination that anybody can nominate to run for chief executive, and it goes against uh, basic law. So all I'm saying is that if anybody comes up with any kind of claim that goes against the basic law, yes, the freedom to express such views is much less today than before because of the National Security Bill. And you can see that full interview on Conflict Zone here on DW at 1930 UTC or online at dw.com forward slash Conflict Zone. Now, Hong Kong politicians who openly oppose Beijing have been targeted in mass arrests. Not only do they face disqualification from upcoming elections, but possibly life imprisonment. Are elections now meaningless? DW's Phoebe Kong talked to one of those arrested. Every day when Cyrus Lau returns from his job as a nurse, he recalls the shocking moment of his first arrest. It was 5 a.m. in the morning. I was sleeping, and suddenly a group of people banged on the door. Six police officers were here to arrest me. I was very shocked that they knew where I live. They must have been following me for quite a while. The 36-year-old nurse has been living in the hotel for months to avoid bringing the coronavirus home from the hospital. 
Cyrus Lau was among the 55 Hong Kong politicians arrested for subversion by running in an unofficial primary last July. The authorities claimed they sought to paralyze the government by vetoing its budget and bills. Police seized many of his campaign materials, posters and leaflets are now seen as potential criminal evidence. It's like a double whammy. My work during the pandemic has already been intense and overwhelming. Now I can't even let my guard down when I'm off duty. This arrest is absurd. The constitution gives lawmakers the power to scrutinize and veto the government's proposals. The authorities are rounding up dissidents. As protests were deterred under Beijing's new law and pandemic restrictions, that primary was the biggest movement in recent months. Over 600,000 people voted to pick the opposition candidates for the now postponed legislative election. It's still unclear whether the government will call an election this year. The mass arrests have effectively silenced many of the most outspoken and influential political figures in town, although they haven't been prosecuted. Many are now staying low profile, distancing themselves from interview and public appearance. Cyrus Lau and other leaders currently on bail are not allowed to leave Hong Kong. They think the opposition movement will evolve into a leaderless one, just as the protest did. We cannot only count on leaders or parties anymore. I believe Hong Kong people are smart and adaptive enough to come up with a new form of activism. It's not likely to go as public as before, but people will keep their strength for the next opportunity. But that doesn't mean that he would just sit still and do nothing. Right now he's working as an advocate for his nursing union, as long as he is due free to do so.